Um, my name is uh, James Brogan. I'm the co-founder of a company called Pep Talk. Uh, the title of my class today is, oh no, not another yoga class. And I think one of the things I'm going to talk a bit today about is probably the misconceptions about well-being as an area. Um, that's a little bit myself. I'm a co-founder of the company. And I guess the first thing I'm going to talk about is the problem with well-being. And I think when you look at some of these slides here, how many people here probably when they think of well-being either think of a buff man in the gym, a silly quote on Twitter about well-being, or an avocado. Uh, there's been obviously an enormous growth and in interest in this area. However, there's probably a lot of misconceptions about what it can do for a company and a business. And a lot of what Pep Talk does is look at well-being as a way of harnessing productivity, performance, and engagement in companies. So I guess for me, it's probably part of today is hopefully you'll come away with a better understanding of the links between well-being and performance. There's a huge amount of research out there that creates that link and we want to try and get away from these type of things and towards actual performance and stuff that makes a difference to your companies. So just a quick agenda, I'm going to run through some of the challenges that companies are facing in this area. The link between well-being and performance. One of the reasons I'm here today, a little bit about the new standard, and obviously well-being is, is now part of that standard, so it's something that's going to be coming more and more prevalent in companies, and it's a great way for companies to differentiate themselves when it comes to retention, attraction, everything else like that. How to build a program. Again, there's a lot of probably misunderstandings around how you will build a well-being program in your company. And lastly, metrics and measures. So again, if well-being is to become a core part of any business, it needs to be measured. It needs to be put under the same sort of scrutiny as any other type of core function within a business itself. So probably the first thing to talk a bit about is about the engagement. And one of the challenges and one of the reasons well-being is coming to the fore in a lot of ways, the way we work and the structure of companies at the moment is, is broken. So if you look at some of the statistics and the, and the, and the research around in global, at global level in terms of engagement, global engagement scores are probably somewhere between 20 to 30% at a global level. The trust between staff and their employers is somewhere between 20% and sometimes less depending on the country you go to. Productivity and performance is continuing to decline. So there's a suggestion based on this type of research that there's a definite disconnect between the employer and the employee. And what we talk about here is there's a, there's a real connection between well-being and how it can help with these areas. So this is a small research report done um, in the US and it directly correlates companies with well-being, robust well-being programs and their actual bottom line and they outperform companies that don't have well-being programs. The US is a, probably a little bit further ahead than us here when we look at well-being but the research and the stats is there to suggest that this is an area that needs to be really looked at and closely monitored as we go forward. So just this is a little bit about the link to performance. So these are just three areas that we in Pep Talk talk about. Activity, mindset, and nutrition, three of the key pillars by which we deliver programs in companies. And when you look at these three, so these are just three small little case studies, but they all create a direct link between, so for example, this company on the left is a US company that implements online mindfulness programs. And again, they've found that it's helped a huge amount with resilience, vigor, and worker engagement, and it has enhanced overall well-being. This is a British research study that looks at activity. And again, the study found that workers that spend between 30 to 60 minutes walking per day are more active, more mental, and their mental performance improves. So what we talk a lot about is the research behind well-being and why it is going to be increasingly important for companies as we go forward. The last piece then is just around food. So the impact that food has on your cognitive performance. So which is why per decision at lunch can actually derail an entire afternoon. And, and this is something people probably don't think a lot about. What I eat is actually impacting on the decisions I make within the business. There's been a lovely study done in the, the UK as well that suggests that people that eat more fruit and vegetables are happier, more engaged, and in fact even more creative when it comes to work. So this just talks a bit about the research behind well-being, why it's increasingly a topic that companies are looking at, and really this is because it actually can impact on performance, and that's the key message that I want you to take away. So obviously the standard and what now is coming to the fore is well-being as a, as, a, as a program. So I suppose, how do we build a program? That's one of the first key things that most organizations ask us when we come in. 
the research that we do in this area every day, these are just some of the areas and some of the, the, the key bits that companies are looking at when they talk about well-being. So family focus. Employees are increasingly interested in how, I suppose, from a, from a, from a well-being perspective, you can look to deal with some of the issues they have in their home life. The idea that an employee comes to work as an employee, those days are pretty much gone. You've got to look at the employee as a person and their family life and how they can interact with work, but also combine that with family life. They're all time sensitive, so time is an issue. Full stop, time is an issue. So how do we design a program that doesn't take up too much time? Younger employees, evening activities. What are we doing for co companies and what are we doing for younger employees in the evening? Technology enabled. So Pep Talk is primarily a technology enabled platform. I'll talk a little bit about what, what that looks like in a couple of minutes, but technology allows especially younger people to access well-being in and of their own time. Trying to get everyone to come to lunch and learns and these type of areas is, is increasingly difficult. Time is tight, everyone's busy, so I think that's an important part to take away. Exercise is a great way to relieve stress. Nutritional ideas, that's what employees want. Nutritional ideas, what to cook, better ways of cooking, the impact that it has on their cognitive skills. On this side, financial well-being is actually an area that we do a lot in. Uh, it's becoming increasingly important just due to the stress that people are under trying to manage their finances. So we deliver independent financial programs through our technology that helps people understand well-being, their financial well-being a little bit better. Again, some people are conscious of their weight and how do we improve that? How do we help them design a specific program for them through our app that helps them? And then this idea of being inspired by your colleagues and friends. We've probably all seen from Operation Transformation to other initiatives like this, the impact that doing things in a group and within a team environment can help. And that's the beauty of being in a company. There's a company program there that the whole company can get involved in and people can support each other. And in our experience, people perform better when they're in teams and when they're in groups. So that's a really nice way, I suppose, for us to, to actually uh, build it. This is just a bit of a matrix that talks a bit about a framework for designing a well-being program in your company. So we start at the top, this, the strategy that you design, and this is usually where we would come in and work with you to design a strategy, but the next part is really important, stakeholder buy-in and a budget. From company to company, it very much depends, but to get senior management bought into this area is so important. And really, that's where the performance metrics that we talk about are so important. For a senior manager and for senior leaders to buy into this area, they have to see a performance return. And that's the important bit that the technology and the data gives them. The budget is obviously important. Some companies have budgets for this area, others don't. But I think with the new standard, I think we'll find that companies will allocate more and more to this area. A framework then, so you need to have a beginning, middle and end to your program. It needs to have a 12 month. We see so many companies that do well-being weeks or well-being days. Well-being weeks and well-being days are brilliant ways of raising awareness of the area, but no different to me going to the gym for, for a day or going on a diet for a week. It actually isn't gonna make any difference. It's not gonna make any difference to your employees and it's probably just gonna, in some way, raise the area without actually dealing with it. So for us, a proper 12-month framework is what we, we build, and that's how you're gonna actually see results. You won't see a result from a well-being day, albeit that you'll raise awareness of the importance of the area and maybe present an issue for yourselves in terms of actually do we have a program that's gonna deliver this. The next piece is probably just around brand and personality. So obviously, we have a brand, and this is oftentimes a very good way to get employees to buy into what you're trying to do. Companies that run internal well-being programs, there sometimes is a pushback from employees because they feel, one, what does this company know about my well-being? And two, why are they doing this? Is there some sort of a reason as to why they're looking at my well-being? So oftentimes to, to outsource this area and to leave it with experts, we have found that it's got more engagement and more return versus a company doing it internally. But there are really successful internal company programs as well, but definitely those programs usually have a nice brand and a nice personality around them. The piece then in the, in the red, comms and metrics. So how do you communicate your program? Do you work with the internal comms team to bring it to life? What metrics do we have around the success or failure of the program? The content, what are we focusing on between fitness, nutrition, mindset? 
And, and again, how much fun is the program? Wellbeing is an area that allows you to have a bit of fun. It allows you to engage with your staff in a way that maybe you can't do in other areas of the business. So definitely look at it as a way you can actually engage and get involved with the company. The last few points then are just around life skills, gamification, and make it real. Make it real to the company. Gamification is an important point. So this is the idea that there's a, there's a, there's a reward and recognition for people that get involved in the program. Uh, so this is a really nice framework that can help companies develop out their, their, their well-being programs. The metrics and measures is probably important in terms of the standards and in terms of what we're trying to achieve from our well-being programs, because if we're not measuring it, how are we going to provide a platform in order to, to, to help us with, with, with some of the stuff that we're going to do from an ISO perspective? So why are you measuring it? Again, it has to correlate and align to the business objectives of the company. It gives you guys a baseline. So. Most companies have no idea about the well-being of their company other than potentially occasional engagement surveys. So what we do, and one of the first things in pep talk we do, every employee takes a small little survey that gives us what we call our well-being score. This is a really nice way to at least have a baseline that can help you design a program rather than what happens a lot of the time is, is finger in the air stuff. So the baseline allows you to design a program that actually is relevant to your company. The insights that we'll begin to get about the company over time will then help us evolve the program. So the idea of just having a, a plug and play program, every company is different, every company has different employees, some are working remotely, some are based all around the country in different types of work. So how do we develop our insights that can help design a program that's relevant to them? Recognition and rewards. We need to reward those staff that are actually championing this area. If they're going to, to get involved and champion it, then we need to recognize that. And that is the reason why metrics and measures are important. Otherwise, how do you actually reward? How do you drive a culture of well-being, a culture of high performance, unless you're re recognizing and rewarding those people that are getting involved? And finally, that piece around the return on investment, that at the end of the year, you can sit down with your boss or with the staff and say, listen, this is how we perform, guys. This was how the actual program delivered on the metrics that we decided at the start of the year. And and those metrics can differ. Just so to be clear, like some, some companies work with us because they want to attract staff. They want to attract in a, in a buoyant employment market. They want to attract new staff. Some people work with us because they want to actually um, retain staff. Retention is obviously a big issue for a lot of companies. It's difficult to differentiate yourself purely on wages at the moment. So what Pep Talk and the program does, it allows you to actually differentiate yourselves from some of your competitors. So this is just some of the reasons as to why metrics and measures are important. And I guess finally, like, our advice is that it's, it isn't one size fits all. What you want to achieve is very much dependent on your company. It's not about being effective or not, it's about measuring and improving. So don't just, if one particular program does not work, don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. It's about evolving a program that works for your particular company. And if certain activities aren't worth them, let's change them up, as I say. Don't just focus on reducing costs. It is about people. So while absenteeism and stuff like that can be directly measured and is an important part of our well-being programs and some of our return on investment, it isn't just about reducing costs. It needs to be about empowering your people to be better at what they do. Uh, and, let, and look at existing measures you have. So you might have engagement scores, you might have retention rates. So there is stuff that we want when we sit down with companies that'll help us develop a program. You might have statistics and measures right now that can help us design a program that's relevant for you and to start thinking of the return on your well-being program. So I suppose how can Pep Talk help? And just a little bit about the company and what we do within companies. The inspiration for Pep Talk and what it's designed to do is build a high performance culture within companies. What we want to try and do is connect employees on a human level. We create a team dynamic and a community within companies that helps drive a culture of high performance. We foster, a, 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 I suppose, a, a culture, a growth mindset culture. Employees that have a growth mindset that are curious about learning, about empowering themselves to be better, they're going to be more productive and more high-performing employees for you. We drive energy, passion, and engagement. That comes from the brand, the people involved in the company. So it's really important for us that there's a passion and an energy behind what we do because that has to drive performance. And finally, the results and the data. So what Pep Talk really is, we are a performance platform designed for real people, and we deliver this in a fun, friendly, and engaging way. Two key, two key parts. 
We have our dashboard, which is the metrics, so that's what you as the employer sees. And for the employee, you get access to a unique app. So every employee in your company would have access to an app which will take care of all of their well-being needs, which is a really nice way, for, especially for companies that have employees out on the road every day of the week. How do we get them involved in this area? This is a really important and unique, I suppose, selling point for us. What actually happens within the app and what actually goes on? We have curated content from nutrition, mindfulness, and activity experts. We have challenges across nutrition, mindfulness, and activity. We have data and science that, provides, that is provided through the dashboard. On-site activities are as well delivered. So within a, within a program, you also have access to six, pep, six of what we call our pep talks. And these are, I suppose, delivered by experts in the field that will come on site and deliver a really powerful message across a, a whole range of well-being topics from sleep to nutrition to you know, dealing with stress, resilience, all of those areas that affect employees every day of the week. So these are the on-site activities that support our technology. The social community, really important. Everyone, is in the everyone in the company is on the app. Everyone is able to communicate with each other, and it creates a sense of community and team within that company. And finally, the, the Pep Talk Academy is our learning and development portal. So that allows employees to go in and actually empower themselves to be better at resilience, be better at high performance. We have some really good sports, high performance sports and athletes that deliver some of our Pep Talk Academy programs, delivered online, people can watch them when they want. The Netflix generation really want to watch content when they can and that's the beauty of the technology, it allows people to get access to it when they want. And finally, just on the dashboard, so this is just a tiny bit about what, what, what companies see when they actually go into the back end. So you're able to see access to the well-being score of your company, the engagement and usage. You're able to see how, much, how many people are actually engaging in the platform from week to week. Their general overall aggregated levels of activity. Really important point here, this is not Big Brother. There's no... There's no isolated people here that are monitored. It's not about that. It's about trying to actually aggregate data, look at trends, and develop a well-being program that works for a company. So it's aggregated data versus anything that's more individualized. Um, and there's some really nice management and reporting tools there that will help, I suppose, convince management that this is a program that's working. So again, it's all about developing a, a return on investment, and this is where the dashboard really can help. And really, hopefully, from a, from a standards perspective, we'll hope build out a really, I suppose, important part of that process that you can, you know, you can have a, a standard around, you can stand by the, tra the, the likes, the engagement, and the overall performance of your program. These are some of the companies we're working with, very wide ranging from, from banking companies across to airlines to financial industries. Uh, so it's really wide and really varied and, and this is a big growth area for a lot of companies. So really interested in having, you know, answering any questions that people have about this area because it, it, is, it is an area that people are trying to get their heads around a little bit. We, we, we do collaborate and consult with companies to help. But uh, that gives you a little bit of a, a, a wide-ranging sense of uh, the actual well-being area. Uh, thanks for your time, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have.